Gospel is a culture in itself. It creates a new culture, a new society, a new way of thinking, a new way of living that totally contradicts everything in the world. And that's what's wrong with your young contemporary Christianity today. You think that in order to change the world, you've got to be like it. So you dress like it, look like it, smell like it, act like it, walk like it, and talk like it. You think you're cool. You might be cool, but you're not godly. A while back, I came in this young guy who was doing street work in this sort of small town. He was doing street work. Man, he looked like a modern day Serpico. You probably don't even know who that is. But he had an earring and bracelets on and everything. And I kind of talking to him. He was, well, you got to understand, you know, Mr. Washer, I'm, I'm there on the street. And I go, how many people's in this town? I'm, I'm, you, I got to. I said, look, young man, I served for years in inner city Dallas, Fort Worth, in places where the police wouldn't go. I had male prostitutes sleeping in the bunk bed beside me down at a mid... I've been in places you'd be afraid to dream about and ministered to people who were on the street. And guess what? You know what I looked like? A preacher. And you know what? They didn't care. Because they didn't need someone who looked like them. They needed someone who would love them and tell them the truth. You're not relevant because you're like them. You're relevant because you're totally different from them. And don't take Jesus and make Him cool. Because He's not. You see, apart from the intervention of God regenerating a heart of a person, if you truly tell them about Jesus, they're going to hate Him. Paul had every reason to be ashamed of the Gospel. His flesh had every reason to be ashamed. The Gospel we preach ought to be a shameful, stupid, horrid thing in the mind of an unconverted man. But to those that God saves, it will be the very Word. And here's what I want to tell you. People come to me all the time and they say, Boy, I would love to see God do miracles and, and love to see God really do stuff. Well then, you, what you've got to do is cut yourself off from all these silly little... I don't, supporting yourself in the flesh. Silly little things of thinking that through doing this or that or other things, God's going to move. No. Spare yourself. Cut yourself off from every hope in the flesh. Trust only in God. Do exactly what He says. And you may be crucified on a tree, but you will see God move. And you will see a manifestation of His power. That's what's wrong with church. Turned it into nothing more than a six flags over Jesus where people are entertained and they have to do it because there's no power left. And there's no power because the truth, truth is not being preached and it's not being demonstrated. love the statement made by Leonard Ravenhill years ago. He goes, the world isn't looking for a new definition of Christianity. It's looking for a new demonstration of Christianity. Now, Paul said he wasn't ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it was the power of God. The conversion of a person, a person being born again. The way I see Scripture, the true conversion of a person is the greatest demonstration of the power of God that's ever been revealed in the history of time. You think creation is a miracle? What about recreation? The greatest demonstration of the power of God is to be the church of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know something. It is. Now, let me, let me just say something. It's very, very important. I am so tired. Now, listen to me. Follow me on this. I am so tired of hearing people say there's just as much sensuality and wickedness and divorce and, and pornography and, and wickedness in the church is outside of the church. Have you ever heard people say that? Man, there's just as much just gross error and immorality and filth and, and things in the church as outside of the church. That is not True. The church of Jesus Christ in America is broken and humble and beautiful. And although she has many failings, she is not wayward, but she is following her husband, the Christ. The problem in this culture is what you're calling the church is not the church. People say, oh, there's so many churches in America, so many churches in the South. No, there's not. There's a lot of really pretty brick buildings on finely manicured lawns, but there aren't many churches. Right. Every true believer is going to walk with God. The problem, it's, it's like a dear friend of mine always says, people, people will say, you know, we're Christians. We should not be hating one another. If you're hating one another, you're not Christian. 
We're Christians. We should act like it. If you're not acting like it, you're not a Christian. My goodness, listen to us. If you don't act like a human being, you're not a human being. You don't act like a deer, you're not a deer. You may be a cow, a horse, or a pumpkin, but you're not a deer. And the fact that it's so... You know, I do not burn so much. I do burn for lost people. But my burning is more a zeal for the Lord in His name. And I can't stand it that because of the pathetic preaching and because of the way churches are supposedly grown, you have a whole bunch of people professing the name of Christ who live like devils. Or even worse, moral people without any love for Christ. And the world looks on and because, like Paul the Apostle says, because of you, the name of God is blasphemed among the unbelievers. They go, where's the power? But you say this gospel had power. Look how the devil in his wickedness so... You know, we always think the devil's after you. Well, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me just set something for you. He's not so much after you as he is after God. You're small for us. He's not worried about you. His great desire is to malign God. To accuse God. To misrepresent God. And one of the greatest instruments in His hands today to do that is evangelical preachers. Because they build churches by entertaining unconverted people. My dear friend, he says that the gospel is the power of God. Now let me ask you a question. Is there any power of God revealed in your life? And I'm not talking about the power to heal or the power to do miracles or the power to call down fire from the sky. I'm talking about the power of a godly life. I am talking about the power of loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm talking about the power of sacrificial generosity. I'm talking about the power of kindness. I'm talking about the power of covering over sensuality. Is there any power of God in your life? Or is Christianity just something you do? Is there any? Can you point to the power of God changing you? It is the power of God. And now here is the word for the day. The power of God for salvation. To everyone who believes. Not to some who believe, but to everyone who believes the gospel, there is the promise of salvation. And you say, yes, Brother Paul, that is true. Be careful. Because when I say salvation, I might be meaning something completely different than you. You see, in America today, when someone says, yes, everyone who believes is saved, what is basically meant by that, everyone who believes is going to heaven. And that's not what this text means. It does mean that. But far more than that. So that if you only say that, you haven't got the correct meaning. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation or deliverance. Now, what type of salvation are we talking about? Salvation, yes. From the condemnation of the law, the wrath of God, death. Yes, that's what it means. Fellowship with God, a home in heaven, all those things that you hear about. It does mean that, but it doesn't just mean that. It's not just the power of God unto salvation from the condemnation and death and wrath of God, but it is salvation and deliverance from the power of sin in your present life. Is God manifesting His power in your life so as to deliver you from the sins and the darkness and the fallenness of this age? Do you see as you walk year by year with the Christ, year by year in faith, year by year trusting in His work, do you see an ever-increasing deliverance from the power of sin and temptation? Are you being conformed to the image of Christ? Are you being separated from the world? You see, that's what it means. 